Again, happy holidays, kids. Now, time for, no, see, yet another, no, see, no, sorry, from the Christmas storybook collection. Today's story titled Beauty and the Beast, a Christmas gift for Chip. It was Christmas Eve at the castle. The enchanted objects didn't usually exchange gifts, but they loved to decorate the library and trim the tree. Belle was eager to help place a pair of shoes by the fire. When I was a little girl, my father and I would leave out our shoes on Christmas Eve for Papa and Noel to, to fill with treats. Belle explained, I'm a teacup, Chip said. I don't wear shoes. What if Papa and Noel can't find me? Belle smiled. You might be a teacup now, but you weren't always. Do you have any of your old shoes laying around? Hmm. Yep, Chip replied. All the enchanted objects do. Hmm. Now, Belle and Chip jumped into action. They raced from room to room, gathering up pairs of old shoes for Chip, Mrs. Potts, Lumiere, and Cogsworth. Once the pairs were gathered, Belle and Chip made their way in back to the library. They neatly arranged the shoes in front of the fireplace. Then took a step back to admire their work. A little while later, Mrs. Potts announced it was bedtime for Chip. But I'm not tired, Chip said, sw swallowing a yawn. Mrs. Potts and Belle exchanged smiles and tucked the sleepy teacup into the cupboard. Into the cupboard. As Chip settled in for the night, Belle thought about Christmas in the castle. The decorations were lovely, but she wanted to do more. She wanted Chip to have the best Christmas yet. Suddenly, the beast burst into the room. How dare you enter, he enter here, he shouted. Everyone shuddered with fear, but Belle refused to be intimidated. I was trying to find a gift for Chip, she said, finding her courage. He helps me share the Papa Noel tradition with the castle, and I want to warn him for his kindness. It's Christmas Eve, after all. The beast had no patience for this. The room was off limits. Get out, he shouted. Faced with no other choice, Belle and the enchanted objects took refuge in the kitchen. But Belle couldn't stop thinking about the beast's actions. Is he always that unreasonable? Belle asked. Mrs. Paws tried to explain. Soon after he lost his mother, the, ma the master lost his favorite toy she'd ever given him. A white horse with blue eyes and a black mane. Out of sadness and anger, he closed up that room forever, along with his heart. Belle felt sorry for the beast, but she wouldn't be swayed. As the enchanted objects drifted off to sleep, Belle returned to the beast's childhood room. While searching for Chip's gift, she found a ball of string in an old music box. Then she happened upon a, a pair of the beast's shoes from when he was a boy. Now, setting the beast's shoes aside, Belle no, she turned to the toys in front of her. With a little tinkering, she knew she would create something wonderful for Chip. As the daughter of an inventor, Belle had plenty of experience with things like this. And somehow, working this way, no, we see, made her father feel close by. Belle lined up the carriages to tighten it together with the string. Then she took apart the winding mechanism from the music box and put it into the first carriage. Belle worked long into the night, but finally finished. Now all she needed was something to wrap the gifts with. Belle opened a drawer and found deep, found deep in the back a spool of red ribbon. But behind the spool, now Belle discovered something even more precious. It was the beast's lost horse, the same one Mrs. Potts had described earlier. Ever so gently, Belle cradled the toy in her new hand, and uh, cradled the toy in her hands. You've been dearly missed, she said. It's about time you were found. Belle carefully placed the beast's shoes outside his door with Toy Horse resting inside. She knocked, then slipped away. When the beast opened his door, he immediately recognized his long-lost toy. See, where did you come from? He asked. The beast could hardly contain his delight. Hiding behind a nearby pillar, Belle watched as the surprise melted to see the beast's anger into joy. Before heading off to bed, Belle stopped by the library. She placed the carriages by Chip's shoes, then hurried back to her room. She couldn't wait for the next day. The next morning, Christmas finally arrived. 
Felony's hidden objects flooded into the library. They usually enjoyed a cozy fire in their freshly decorated space, but this year something magical had happened. What well, bless my soul, Mrs. Potts exclaimed. She directed everyone's attention toward the fireplace. Each pair of shoes was filled with delicious treats and small surprises. No, no, Papa Noel did come, Chip shouted. He found us. Belle couldn't believe it. When she'd left the carriages for Chip last night, the shoes had been empty. But now every pair was full to bursting. Papa Noel brought us most of this, Belle said to the teacup. But the carriages are from me and are from me to you. Thanks for all your help yesterday. Mm. Wow, Chip replied. Thanks, Belle. Belle smiled and revealed the final surprise. This may look like ordinary carriages, she began, but they're not. She took Chip and the carriages over to the floor by the Christmas tree. These carriages can move on their own, Belle exclaimed, <laughs> explained. With the flip of switch, the carriages drove by themselves, as if by magic. It just so happened that the beast was outside the library looking in. Belle convinced the beast to join them, and everyone returned to the fireplace. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I was so angry yesterday. The beast confessed. I didn't see you get angry, Chip said. That's pr that's right, Beast said, turning to the young teacup. You didn't. But I heard you played a big role in bringing Papa and Well back to the castle. Chip blushed and hopped onto the beast's shoulder. Then the beast presented Chip with his toy horse from his youth. This horse is very special to me. And it needs someone very special to look after it. I was hoping that special someone could be you. The beast explained. I'd be honored, Chip replied. Mrs. Paws wiped a tear from her eye. And Belle's heart swelled. It was the happiest Christmas that anyone could remember. The End <laughs>